I have felt that this jury should have been sequestered uh, from the very beginning. Um, to make that clear. And so I had moved um, based on that, this, again, for a mistrial. This, the, the idea is, is that it is a public trial. I think the court has accomplished that. But the media attention is so profound. It is such a, um, I mean, it is such a modern uh, comparison. I mean, it's such a modern problem to have where literally I walk from this courtroom into the courtroom where I have been permitted to, to stay. During the course of this trial, I've received literally thousands and thousands and thousands of emails, um, so much so that I don't even look at that particular email anymore. So, um, I mean, but my phone gives me alerts on things that just happened. I mean, you can't avoid it. And it is so per pervasive that it is, I just don't know how this jury, it can really be said to be that they are free from the taint of this. Um, and now that we have U.S. representatives uh, threatening acts of, of, uh, of violence in relation to this specific case, it's, it's mind-boggling to me, Jeff. Well, I'll give you that Congresswoman Waters may have given you something on appeal that may result in this whole trial being overturned. But what's the state's position? Your Honor, the state's position, first and foremost, and this is a concern I raised at the beginning uh, of the proceedings, you know, while it's a jury selection, is that we can't uh, allow uh, statements like this, vague statements, to be considered a part of the record. On appeal, if there's a specific statement that a specific U.S. representative made, uh, then there needs to be some sort of formal offer of proof with the exact quotes of the exact statement or some kind of a declaration. And I'm sure uh, Mr. Nelson can do that if he thinks that that's something that's appropriate. Uh, I don't know that uh, this particular representative made a spe specified threat of violence. I don't know what the context of the statement is. I also don't know what television shows um, uh, Mr. Nelson is referring to in terms of any of this. And so I just don't think that we can muddy the record with vague allegations as to things that have happened without you know, very specific evidence uh, that's being offered before the court. As a practical matter, through the jury selection process, uh, the court has provided instructions, uh, has determined whether or not there are any outside influences. The law presumes that the jury follows the judge's instructions. And the court has uh, instructed the jury, instructed the jury today, that they're not to let any outside influences or public opinion swear, uh, sway their deliberation. And the law presumes that they would be capable of doing that. And so without um, any sort of specific uh, offer of proof or information in the record, without any specific evidence <clears throat> that this particular juror, jury, was influenced in any particular way, uh, I believe that the defendant's motion should be denied. And Your Honor, I make, it, I, I make my comments, I mean, in the context of this is all such an evolving situation. Obviously, I spend my weekend preparing for closing, closing uh, remarks, um, and I certainly can supplement the record with news articles. I can supplement the record with you know, the storylines of the particular shows that were brought to my attention. So there's, I'm making it to note the record at this particular point, and I can certainly supplement them. Yeah, you can supplement the record with whatever media reports. I'm aware of the media reports. I'm aware that Congresswoman Waters was talking specifically about this trial and about the unacceptability of uh, anything less than a murder conviction and talk about being confrontational, but you can submit the press articles about that. This goes back to what I've been saying from the beginning. I wish elected officials would stop talking about this case, especially in a manner that is disrespectful to the rule of law and to the judicial branch and our function. I think if they want to give their opinions, they should do so in a respectful and in a manner that is consistent with their oath to the Constitution to respect a co-equal branch of government. Their failure to do so, I think, is abhorrent, but I don't think it has prejudiced us with additional uh, material that would prejudice this jury. They have been told not to watch the news. I trust they are following those instructions and that there is not in any way uh, a prejudice to the defendant.
beyond the articles that we're talking specifically about the facts of this case. A congresswoman's opinion really doesn't matter a whole lot. Anyway, so motion for mistrial is denied.